Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about antidepressants and addiction. In this video, we talked about antidepressant withdrawal, which many people associate and equate with addiction. However, in this video, we're going to debunk the myth that antidepressants cause addiction. We're going to define neuroadaptation and addiction so that you know the difference. So stay tuned. So we've already discussed that antidepressants cause withdrawal syndrome. So we're not arguing that at all. However, they are not addicting. Most people often get neuroadaptation confused with addiction. And neuroadaptation occurs with many pharmacological agents, including antidepressants. Other medications known to cause withdrawal, but not addiction, include your blood pressure medications, steroids, seizure medications, and even aspirin. In fact, stopping aspirin or blood pressure medication too abruptly can be more life-threatening than stopping an antidepressant, as stopping aspirin or a blood pressure medication too quickly can actually lead to a heart attack. So why does this happen? Well, while taking these medications, your body establishes a new homeostatic set point to establish a new balance in your body with those neurotransmitters or pathways that are created. When that medication is abruptly taken away, your body has to readapt to a new homeostatic set point or a new balance. And so it rushes around trying to reestablish that homeostasis because those neurotransmitters have been asleep and those transport systems have been lazy while the medication was working in that system. And so all this chaos ensues until a new set point is established or a new balance is made via your own body's adaptive responses. Hence, the withdrawal effects that you experience from antidepressants. Addiction, on the other hand, has the withdrawal component and even that neuroadaptation which leads to withdrawal. However, what makes addiction different from just neuroadaptation is the fact that addiction is defined by the rewards received and the reward seeking behaviors that ensue due to the rewards the brain perceives when taking a substance that is addicting. And this reward seeking behavior is primarily influenced by the influx of dopamine in the ventral striatum and more specifically the nucleus accumbens which is our reward system or reward pathway of the brain. Antidepressants have no action on dopamine in this area of the brain. The antidepressants that act on dopamine will increase dopamine in the dopamine transport systems in the prefrontal cortex and frontal lobes of the brain. And so therefore, there's no reward system being activated when taking an antidepressant. Addiction also has a component of tolerance. However, some may argue that antidepressants have this issue with tolerance. However, there are max dosages that you can reach of an antidepressant where therapeutic benefit is perceived or is seen and going higher than that dose will not give you any more of a benefit. However, you would just be increasing your risk of side effects. Another component of addiction that differentiates from just neuroadaptation is the drug seeking behaviors that ensue due to an addiction. Because of that strong influence on the reward system, people who become addicted begin to have drug cravings, feel a loss of control, and will have drug seeking behaviors despite negative consequences. So you're gonna go out and grab that gram of cocaine despite the fact that you have to pay your mortgage or your rent because that reward that you're seeking is so strong that you don't care about the consequences. Antidepressants will not cause that type of reward system or reward seeking behavior. And though antidepressants have the withdrawal component and arguably tolerance, they do not have the drug seeking behavior component of addiction. 
And with addiction, you have to have all three to be diagnosed with an addictive disorder of any type of substance. And so therefore, antidepressants are not addicting. And if you are against antidepressant medications, that's okay. There are other ways to treat your depression, such as therapy and natural ways. And if you are interested in natural ways to treat depression and anxiety, go ahead and look me up, levelheadedmind.com. Schedule an appointment and we can do a consultation and review of your history and symptoms and determine a naturopathic treatment plan for you. I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.